today to talk about the early federal government, specifically Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton's role in creating this new Federalist nation, this new nation that is no longer dictated by the will of 13 different states, but a nation that is controlled centrally by the federal government, okay? And when we talk about Hamilton, we're talking about money because remember, he is the Secretary of the Treasury under George Washington. It's his role to fix the finances of the country and just get us in good financial standing. So at this time, right after the Constitution is passed, America is in really bad financial standing. It's, it's, it's a mess. The states have all these different debt. Um, the country itself doesn't even have any credit. It's just a mess. Hamilton's got to fix it. Um, specifically, what are the major money problems of the country? Well, number one, the states are in huge debt. Okay, how did they get there? The Revolutionary War. It's expensive, and, and we should know from our own experience today, Iraq, Afghanistan, you hear about it in the news all the time, and lately you hear about how expensive it is and how much money it's costing the country. Um, uniforms, food, weapons, everything, you gotta pay for it. Um, and this is what happened to the states with the Revolutionary War. It was expensive. They had to borrow money because they didn't have it. And when the war is over, it's just like going on a giant spending spree to Macy's. And you go to the three-day sale. And you probably took mom's credit card because I don't think you're old enough to have one. And you get the bill a month later and you're like, oh, I don't have money to pay this. It's just like the states. The war is over and whoever they borrowed money from is like, okay, you got to pay us back. And the states go, oh, we don't have any money. Now, some states had different levels of debt. The North was a little bit more in debt than the South. But either way, everybody's got some debt, okay? The second problem, the United States government, separate from the governments of the state, because remember, it's a federal nation. So we have state government and federal government. The federal government doesn't even have any credit, okay? The state governments, they have bad credit because they have a lot of debt and they can't pay back. The US government, they don't have any debt, but they don't have any credit. So they have no like financial standing with other countries or other banks or anything like that. It's like, you see those commercials for free, freecreditscore.com, okay? If uh, Pennsylvania, you know, types its information in and it's like, I wonder what my credit score is and it hits return and it's like, whoa, you have a horrible credit score because you're in lots of debt. Okay, if the federal government goes to freecreditscore.com and it types in all its information and Hamilton's doing its thing and uh, hits return, it comes back and it's like, you don't have any credit. You don't even have bad credit. You just have nothing. You haven't taken out any loans. You have no money. What are you doing on our website? Okay, that's if the internet existed, but just to help you understand. So the US doesn't have any credit. And the, the third problem is each state is still dealing with its own currency and it doesn't need a lot of explanation. That's just a problem, okay? Now, it's Hamilton's job to fix it. What's he gonna do? He's got a couple ideas, but his number one big idea is this creation of a national bank, okay? One big centralized bank that's gonna be responsible for all the money in the country. You know, it's gonna provide loans to the states. It's gonna fix everything. This is Hamilton's idea. It's outrageous, but he's going to do it. And he's a secretary of the treasury, so he probably can. Um, he's got two big goals. Hamilton has two big goals with this bank. Number one, get the country in good financial standing. By doing this and fixing the problems of the U.S., he's actually going to make the federal government stronger. It's genius. I'm going to, this is Hamilton. He's like, I'm going to fix the, the money problems of the U.S., and I'm going to get my way, and we're going to have an even stronger central government, okay? Now, specific purposes of the bank, like we said, number one is to um, establish financial clarity, and uh, number two is we're going to issue one paper currency for the whole country to use. This sounds great. I don't think anyone has a, a lot of arguments with numbers one or two. Uh, number three, we got to establish good credit. Okay, that seems like a good idea. No one's going to argue with that. Um, but number four, this is where we have some problems. 
So Hamilton says, I'm going to establish good credit. And then people like Jefferson are going to say, how are you going to do this? And Hamilton says, I'm going to take all the state debt and it's going to become one national debt. And hold your horses. This makes people real nervous. Okay? It's the federal government is basically saying, you know, Virginia, South Carolina, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Georgia, all your debt is mine. It's, it's, it belongs to me. Okay? It's just one big giant ball of debt. Now, that doesn't mean that the states don't still owe money, but they don't owe money to who they originally borrowed it from. They owe money to the United States government. Okay? If you're uh, New Jersey and you borrowed lots of money from like a rich financier in the Netherlands, you don't pay back that rich financier in the Netherlands. You give money to the United States. And then the U.S. government's going to turn around. They're going to pay. Okay? It's like the U.S. is a big middleman. All right? They're taking advantage. So this is actually going to give the U.S. Um, good credit because now it has debt and it can start paying back that debt because the, the states are going to owe it money. Okay? So this is all Hamilton's big idea. Now, number four is clearly going to make states... Um, citizens really nervous, especially the citizens that are those Democratic Republicans that are um, that follow Jefferson. They, of course, want a lot of the power with the states, not you know the federal government. This is a problem. So, why is it a big problem? Let well, let's talk specifics. Number one, obviously, power goes away from the states, going to the federal government. Number two. Jefferson fears that the, the, the bank is going to favor northern interests because in the north, there's a lot of money. There are manufacturers, traders, craftsmen, a lot of money going in this area, okay? The south is not as rich. It's, it's got a couple really big plantations, but for the most part, it's mostly small family farms. And the third problem, and this is huge, is there's no specific authorization for a bank in the Constitution. Holy cow! How did Hamilton get away with it? Nowhere in the Constitution does it say that Hamilton can create a national bank. Seems like a sound argument against Hamilton. How did he get around it? The elastic clause. That necessary and proper clause that the founders were so smart to write. The elastic clause. Clearly, there's a lot of stuff the federal government has to do, and it can't all be written in the Constitution. So the Founding Fathers, the guys who rewrote this Constitution, they said, okay, we'll make laws that are necessary and proper to get things done, okay? So for example, the national government is allowed to collect taxes, but we need an institution to collect taxes. So we're gonna take this elastic clause, okay? If this end of my rubber band is taxes, I gotta have something to collect taxes, so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna stretch it, okay? So here's taxes and here's the National Bank. We're gonna stretch it just enough, okay? And it's still allowed. That's how he gets around it, the Elastic Clause. Even though we're supposed to be giving powers to the state if it's not written in the Constitution, doesn't matter, Hamilton gets around it and he gets around it legally. So, that's the genius of Alexander Hamilton. Um, so, in conclusion, the big thing we need to remember is that by creating a national bank and creating a national debt, Hamilton takes power away from the states, he gives it to the federal government, and that is how we end up with this strong, federalist, centrally run government that will just continue to get stronger and stronger over the next two centuries. Thank you, Alexander Hamilton. See ya.